Hi everyone, today we're going to have a quick wee look at subtraction strategies. The strategy we are going to use today is a chimney sum method. There are other ways to do subtraction, but this is the method we are going to look at today. So the success criteria, we will be using the, our knowledge of subtraction facts. We'll be using place value correctly. We'll be using the chimney sum to solve the sub subtraction problems. And we're going to be pushing our knowledge to problems involving decimals today. Before we begin with decimals, let's have a quick recap of borrowing. Borrowing is something that comes up in subtraction a lot and we need to know how to tackle it if we do come across it. So the first example we'll work through together is 961 take away 47. So in a chimney sum, we're going to lay it out like this. If it helps to have the hundreds, tens and units labels at the top, fire those in because that will help you organise your chimney sum really neatly and that will help you avoid any errors that you might come across. So we're going to start in the units. So in the units at the moment we have got 1 take away 7. Now it's pretty hard to do 1 take away 7 without borrowing. So what we do is something that looks like this. We score out the 6 and it becomes 5 and we add a 1 to the units 1 which becomes 11. This is because we're changing that 60 that was in the tens column into a 50 and a 10. So the 50 remains in the tens column and the 10 goes over to the units column becoming 11. So now we've got in the units column 11 take away 7, which we can do and the answer is 4, which we pop in the answer column. Then moving on to the tens, we've now got 5 take away 4, which is 1. And then in the hundreds, it's just 9 take away nothing, so the answer in in there is 914. Let's have a look at another example. So here we have 217 take away 59. So again just laying out your chimney sum something like that nice and neat. Starting in the units column again we've got 7 take away 9 which is hard to do without borrowing. So what we need to do is go to the tens column. The tens column only has one ten in it. So we move it over into the units column, leaving nothing behind in the tens column. So we've now got 0 in the tens column and 17 in the units column. We now can do 17 take away 9, which is 8. So we just put 8 in the answer column there. Into the tens column now, we've got 0 take away 5. So we're going to have to borrow from the hundreds column this time. So the 2 becomes 1 and move one over into the tens column. What we've done there is we've changed the 200 that was in the hundreds column into 110 tens. So now in the tens column we've got 10 take away 5 which is 5 and in the hundreds column we've just got 100 take away nothing so the total answer is 158. Let's move on to examples with decimals now. So usually with decimals the most common thing that we would be working with is money. So let's have a look at a money problem first of all. So we've got £3.42 take away £1.78. So again just lay it out in a nice chimney sum. This time instead, instead of having hundreds, tens and units, because we've got that decimal point, we've got units, then a space for the decimal point, then a tenths column, then a hundredths column. As you can see in my example, I've labelled those columns and if it helps you, you can do that as well. We now start in the hundreds column, the smallest column, and it's 2 take away 8. So we're going to have to borrow from the tenths column. So the 4 becomes a 3 and then we move 1 over into the hundreds column. So now we've got 12 take away 8, which is 4. In the tenths column, we're going to have to borrow again because we were going to have to do 3 take away 7. So we borrow from the units. So the units becomes 2 and we move 1 over into the tenths column so we've now got 13. So 13 take away 7 is 6. Put in the decimal point just underneath where you had the decimal point in the question. And then in the units we've got 2 take away 1 which is 1. So the final answer there is £1.64. A harder example would be if the numbers after the decimal point are different. So my example here, one of them has got two numbers after the decimal point, one of them's just got one number after the decimal point. So let's start off by laying it out properly like this. So make sure you've got your decimal points on top of each other. That might help you line things up and not get your place value models up. 
So the units we've got 9 and 3, then the decimal point, then the tenths column we've got 2 and underneath we've got the 7. Only one number had hundreds, so I've put 8 in the hundreds column. If it helps, you can add in a 0 on the end of 3.7. It doesn't change the number, but it'll help you perhaps work it out if, um, if that helps you, you can add that in. So start with the hundreds column and we've got 8 take away 0, so that's just 8. The tenths column is 2 take away 7, so we're going to have to borrow from the units. So the units becomes 8 and we move 1 over into the tenths column. So now we've got 12 take away 7, which is 5. Add in the decimal point and finish off with your units. So nine, um, 8 take away 3, which is 5. So the answer is 5.58. Here are some practice questions for you. I've got a medium there which is sort of staying with the money examples, the two numbers after the decimal point. The hot questions have a variety of numbers after the decimal point. Some have one, some have two, so just be careful with those. Pause the video here and see how you get on. Alright guys, let's go over the answers for the medium first of all. So the first one we should have got 0 0.77, second one 1.27, third one 3.56 and the last one 3.03. Let's have a look at that last one in a bit more detail as I think it might have caused some confusion. So we had 10.01 take away 6.98 so we lay it out as, as a chimney sum like this. Starting in the hundreds column we've got 1 take away 8 so we need to borrow but already we can see that there's nothing in the tenths column or even in the units column for us to borrow so we have to go all the way to the tens column to borrow. So we borrow from the 10 and make it 9. We then can move 1 over into the tenths column to make that a 10. We can then borrow from the tenths column making that a 9 and moving a 1 over. So that borrowing requires a couple of extra steps there, it's not as straightforward as just jumping straight from the tenths column all the way back to the hundreds column, there are a few steps involved. So now we have 11 take away 8 which is 3, 9 take away 9 which is 0, and then 9 take away 6, which is 3, giving us our 3.03. Let's have a look at the hot. So the answers for the hot were 63.69, 8.62, 16.71, and 73.51. And again, I want to have a look at that last one in a bit more detail. So we had 100.41 take away 26.9. We can add that zero one at the end if that helps us. So we start off in the hundreds column with one take away zero, which is one. Into the tenths column, we've got four take away nine, which obviously we need to borrow four. So what I've done here is I've gone straight to the whole number 100 and just decided to borrow one from 100 and make that 99 and then move the one over into the tenths column making it 14, take away 9, giving us 5, and then when I get past the decimal point into the tens and units column, I've got 99, take away 26. So I can do 9, take away 6, which is 3, and then 9, take away 2, which is 7, giving us 73.51. Those last ones were tricky because there was a couple of steps involved in borrowing. So just take your time if you do come across questions like that, break it down, See what you can come up with, double check your answer as well. Well done guys, hopefully you have pushed your knowledge of subtraction facts today into including decimal problems. Please bear in mind to use place value correctly as that is probably the main issue that comes up. And please make sure you're borrowing if you need to as that is another common mistake that people can make. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll speak to you soon.